And we're back. The DNC is in deep, deep trouble, and the media is ignoring it. The DNC is being sued by multiple entities, and donors are asking for their money back. And how sweet it is to watch the zeitgeist collapse in front of us. From Life Z, while the mainstream media have been doggedly and extensively covering any narrative that casts President Donald Trump in a negative light, there is one story that reporters and pundits largely have spurned. A lawsuit looming over the Democratic National Committee, alleging it favored former Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton over Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Well, we all know Hillary stole that from Bernie, <clears throat> and they tried to do it to Trump. Had he not won in a landslide, it never would have happened. The DNC came under fire in June of 2016 after damning evidence surfaced from documents leaked by the hacker Guccifer 2.0 showing that the party and the DNC chair, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, heavily favored Clinton over Sanders. Media blackout coverage of suit against the DNC. As reporters and pundits push Trump narratives, the Democratic Party gets a whooping pass by Kathleen Blackhurst, updated May 13th of 2017 at 9.50 p.m., while the mainstream media have been doggedly and extensively covering any narrative that casts President Donald Trump in a negative light. The DNC came under fire in June of 2016 after damning evidence surfaced from documents leaked by that. What the fuck? The elephant in the room for the DNC isn't Trump, or the GOP, or Bernie bros, or Russian hackers. It's its own elitist, corporatist, cryonist, corrupt system that consistently refuses to listen to the will of the people it hopes to represent. It's because the Democratic Party has been hijacked by international bankers. Get the latest installment of the best-selling World War II series or World War III series, excuse me. A class action suit was filed in U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida in October by residents of 45 states against both the committee and Wasserman Schultz for intentional, willful, wanton, and malicious conduct in violating Article 5, Section 4 of the DNC Charter. They represent three classes of plaintiffs, donors to the DNC, donors to the Bernie Sanders campaign, <clears throat> and all registered Democrats, and they want their money back. And rightfully so, I would too. On April 25th, the court held a hearing on a motion to dismiss with the DNC's lawyers arguing that the party has every right to pick candidates in back rooms. There's no contractual obligation here. It's not a situation where a promise has been made that is an enforceable promise. DNC lawyer Bruce Spiva argued in court. Well, it looks good on him. I much look forward to 2018. At this rate, I can't imagine the Democratic Party will be anything other than a shadow of its former self. Twitter just gave its final answer on deleting Trump's account. On Friday, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey responded to liberal calls for the company to delete President Trump's account. Oh, well, here we go again with the anti-free speech. They're offended by his speech. Why? Because it's true? Probably. Independent.co.uk reported, Donald Trump's tweets are good for the world, and he should be allowed to keep sending them, according to Twitter. Well, you're damn right. You shouldn't actually be able to kick anybody off Twitter. <clears throat> Especially if you live in America or a Western country, for that matter. Company CEO Jack Dorsey has responded to repeated calls for his social network to remove the president's account. Critics argue that he is using his huge following to bully his opponents and promote untruths. And that, as a result, he should be shut down like any other account would. Mr. Dorsey said that, in fact, having Mr. Trump's tweets out in the open helped keep people informed and that without them the public would know a lot less about their leaders. Well, no kidding. Because the news never says anything good, we'd never know what the hell was going on. 
I believe it's really important to hear directly from our leadership, he said on a US TV interview, and I believe it's really important to hold them accountable, and I believe it's really important to have these conversations out in the open, rather than have them behind closed doors. So if we're all to suddenly take these platforms away, where does it go? What happens? It goes in the dark, and I just don't think that's good for anyone. Honestly, if Trump wasn't making him so much money, he probably wouldn't be saying this, but it sounds good to me. Mr. Dorsey made a similar suggestion in December before Mr. Trump became president when he suggested more vaguely that it was useful to see Donald Trump's thoughts in real time. The complicated part, Mr. Dorsey said, is just what does this mean to have a direct line to how he's thinking in real time and to see that. So we're definitely entering a new world where everything is on the surface and we can all see it in real time and we can all have conversations about it. It is true, Trump has changed the atmosphere of what Twitter was meant to be. And in fact, I didn't even know what it was until I saw him tweeting on it. It's official. The Trump administration had just moved into the second stage. Despite all the critics of the border wall, President Trump has assured us that the wall is being built and that they have just moved down to narrowing narrowing down the list of designers. I bet it's going to be magnificent. Rumor has it that a bullet train will be built on the top of it. The Gateway Pundit reported, during an interview with Judge Deneen that aired Saturday night, the president touched in a lot on a lot of topics, but one that is near and the dear to the heart of the base of the voters that elected him, elected him came up the border wall. And it's not just a physical barrier we're talking about. We want it as a physical bar barrier, of course, but it also represents a symbol. A symbol that America is no longer the sucker of the world. Judge Deneen asked the president, you going to build that wall? President Trump responded with a big grin on his face. We're going to build the wall, absolutely. Is there a question about that? Fox News reported in the video, which you can watch below, well, you can't watch below, I don't have it. But hundreds of companies initially submitted designs for the wall to the, to the Department of Homeland Security. That list is about to be narrowed down to a handful of finalists, and each will build a prototype near the border here in Southern California. One company in the running is Dark Pulse Technologies, which wants to combine a physical barrier with detection fibers both in and underneath the wall. It's funny. The, de the Democrats would come out and say walls don't work. Well, then why did China build a, what is it, like 4,000 mile wall if it didn't work? And then why is there a wall around Vatican if it doesn't work? And even God, even our Lord in his infinite wisdom, put walls around our cells. For without the walls, <clears throat> our cells wouldn't be separate now, would they? It would be one giant piece of mush and humanity would not exist. Even our creator understands the importance of a wall. The CEO of Dark Pulse Technologies, Dennis O'Leary, commented on the proposed border wall. There are definitely areas that are challenging, but I think the smart way is to go to sort of a layered deployment and part of that layer is going to have to be a technology. That's awesome. I'm convinced that this wall will be so sophisticated, it'll drive innovation, and people across the world will study it. 